everybody, I'm PJ. Um, before I get started, can we just thank this lady up here in the booth who's been doing an amazing job translating for two days? She's probably been the hardest working person at this conference. I've tried to be the hardest drinking person at this conference, but Nick's given me a run for my money. Nick always ruins it for me. So I'm going to talk about urban legends, what you code doesn't really make you who you are. Um, before that, I work at Engine Yard. Um, if you don't know what Engine Yard is, we're a cloud access management platform, which means you build an app, we put it on the cloud. It's really awesome. We give you 24-7 uptime, 24-7 support from great guys like Chris Rigger, who you saw yesterday, Ruby, PHP, Node.js, high performance, open access. And if you want to try it out for 500 hours for free, no credit card, there's a URL right there. We've got some cards out there. Come ask me about it. That's not what I'm here to talk about. So a little bit about me, that's what I'm here to talk about. So um, I've been programming Ruby for like seven or eight years, but like a lot of you, I have more things that happen in my life. Um, you'll notice if you look in the, the lower corner there, that's me with my daughter, Katie. How many of you were at RubyConf in 2013 in Miami? So you guys saw that. Okay, so one thing that I learned from that situation is A, my 11-year-old is smarter than me. She's now 13, still smarter than me. Um, and never go on stage with an 11-year-old because they're going to make you look stupid. Um, but beyond that, you know, I'm not just a programmer. I'm a hockey coach. I'm a musician. I sing karaoke occasionally whenever I can. I come from Buffalo, New York. This is my backyard. I took this picture the day that I left home. <laughs> that was three days ago. You can't really see it, but there's like, some, there's like a middle point in that fence. That, that middle point's about a meter and a half high. The snow goes up to nearly that point. And I'm here, in the sun. <laughs> My wife's really pissed at me right now. Um, another thing I like to do is uh, Ruby karaoke. We did some of that kind of last night. That's, that's me. <laughs> and that's Nick. Now... <laughs> If you can tell, my eyes are closed, so I didn't know this was happening. But enough about me. Let's talk about what this talk is going to be about. So we're coders, we're developers. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of the common misconceptions about the different languages we use, the different communities we're a part of. We're going to talk about kind of the, the cognitive dissonance that communities actually have with each other, and kind of the concepts that separate open source and enterprise, and why I think these things are kind of wrong, and we should kind of do away with them. What this isn't going to be about, if you know what le urban legends are, it's not going to be about chupacabras, or the Loch Ness Monster, or Bigfoot, or alligators in the sewer. It's not going to be about those things. Different urban legends, I could do a talk on that, but we don't have that kind of time. Um, so let's start with our favorite thing, Ruby. So Ruby's really cool. Like, I mean, we're mostly Rubyists. Raise your hand if you've done something in Ruby at some point in time in your life. Yeah, so like Ruby's pretty awesome, and it's great, and we love it, but there's a lot of people on the outside that think, what a bunch of fucking hipsters. <laughs> These guys with their Ruby apps, and they just make, make some stupid app, and they're like, yes, I'm really helping out the world with my organic code, whatever. So let's take a look at how other people that aren't in our community see us. It starts here. It starts with Rails. A lot of people don't separate Rails from Ruby. Believe it or not, you can write Ruby code that has absolutely nothing to do with Rails, never touches Rails, gets to the web without Rails, and has nothing to do with Rails. Okay. Um, but why, why do people think it's always Rails? Why, when you say Ruby, do they assume Rails? Well, because Rails is very vibrant. It's very loud. Um, when people are at Ra RailsConf, is probably the biggest Ruby conference there is, which is kind of ironic because it's not a Ruby conference, strictly speaking. Um, but at the same time, you know, People think that because Rails, it, you know, it has scaffolding and it's, it's great, it's automagical. I really hate that word, it's automagical. It's like you don't even fucking code, you just hit a button and magic, yeah, you made a website, yay. Um, it doesn't work that way. So like, we really need to get people to understand that Ruby does not equal Rails. People do a lot of things with Ruby that are really cool that have nothing to do with Rails. Um, a good friend of mine, who unfortunately passed away last year, Jim Wyrick was a perfect example of this. He took Ruby in so many different directions 
that, you know, he was teaching people to code Ruby to make drones fly around rooms and get stuck up on the ceiling. Um, not the original intent, but, you know, it worked out in the end. Um, but that's kind of the idea. Like, we can stretch Ruby into doing other things. It's not just, let's build a website. Um, this isn't 1998. We're kind of beyond that. Um, the other perception people have often is Ruby's not useful. Um, I'm going to let you read this for a second. This is, uh, this is from a blog post that I came across um, from a, a developer who is trying to prove that the enterprise is not dead. Enterprise code, Microsoft coding, you know, is still very powerful and, and whatever. And it, it brings an interesting point because we often do kind of get the idea that, you know, Ruby coders are these shaggy, fedora-wearing people who are making apps that basically find coffee shops. Um, and that's not completely untrue, but it's mostly untrue. Um, but we kind of get this perception. So, you know, whenever I've, I've, and I'll tell a little story. I went to a little meetup in my hometown where every meetup comes, and you get five minutes to talk about what you do at your meetup. And I, I gave my spiel, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, Western New York Ruby, it's really fun. We come, we talk about Ruby, we do little side projects, it's great. And does anybody have any questions? And this guy goes, what does Ruby do? You can't do anything good with Ruby. I'm like, um, I work at a company called Engine Yard. We wrote that shit in Ruby. We're kind of a big deal. So are these people. All of these have at least a little bit of Ruby running in them somewhere. Whether it's on the back end, the front end, whether it's the main thing they're using, whether it's you know, built in Rails, whatever it is. All of these are using Ruby. So Ruby is not just a little hipster thing that some kids picked up and they make little apps that find organic blend in Soma, whatever. <laughs> it's actually a very powerful tool that we can use to build great applications for the web. But there's other things on the web. So let's talk about the arch enemy of Ruby. <laughs> How many of you have written in PHP before? That's a lot of fucking hands, Jesus. Um, by the way, I'm sorry, I swear a lot when I'm hyper, which is always. Um, so I just want to say, and this is going to come off very offhanded, but you know, PHP is kind of a big deal. Um, I have friends that do PHP, and it's, <laughs> it's actually really, it's, it's actually a very powerful thing. Like, you have to think about this, like, you know, our job as developers is to solve problems, whether that's building a product or actually, you know, working with code itself to contribute back to fix things, make them faster, whatever. PHP is just as vibrant a community as, as, uh, as Ruby is. So, you know, you get this a lot. Oh, PHP is dead. Who the hell does PHP anymore? Is that still around? That thing? PHP? What? Um, PHP is not dead. I've gone to a few of their conferences. Yep. I've done it. I've seen these people. They are just as evangelical. They are just as excited. They are just as into the ideas of what they do as we are here. So we should never discount someone who's doing something similar to us just because they're doing it in a slightly different language. Um, another misconception about PHP, there's no objects. Um, if you're using like PHP 4 or anything before that, that's true, but they've actually picked up a few things from the Ruby community and some other places and said, hey, this object orientation thing, we should look into this. And it's actually just as object oriented as we are. It's just that a lot of us haven't bothered to look at it. Um, the other thing is, as I mentioned, like in Ruby, you could do hardware. You could do hardware in PHP. Okay, baby steps, folks, baby steps. Um, as, uh, as we were talking about earlier, the gentleman who had the absolutely horrifying experience with microphones and projectors blowing up and still managed to get through his talk. Somebody should buy him a beer. Um, the Internet of Things is a big deal. And Ruby isn't the only place. MRuby isn't the only place. JRuby, Argus, R2. These aren't the only places that are interacting with objects of everyday life to give better programming uh, tools so that we can get these things in place and actually see really cool things like hopefully flying cars. Um, maybe someday. Um, and PHP is starting to take steps. They're starting to realize that they need to interact, not just on the web. I mean, keep in mind, PHP to this day is 80% of the web. 80% of the sites that are on the web use PHP in some way. 90% of the servers in the world have PHP running on them. 90%. It's kind of a big number. But yeah, it's totally dead. Nobody uses that shit anymore. Um, PHP is insecure. They have no security. Again, if, if, you go, if you haven't touched PHP in five or six years and you were using PHP 4, PHP 3, whatever, 
yeah, you're basically hyping up your HTML with some cool scripts in there, but it didn't really do anything. It certainly wasn't secure. But the lang languages evolve. They change. PHP is a modern language, just like Ruby is a modern language. And it's important to, to understand that these things have maturity. They have a shelf life. They don't just sit stagnant. These are active, active communities, active code bases, and they're still evolving every day. So let's talk about Java. Java's hard. Java's dead. No, Java's not dead. Um, I mean, it powers the biggest apps we have available today. Do you remember that image I had on earlier of the guy on the plane? He was like, yeah, screw your stupid Soma coffee app. I wrote the code that wrote this plane. He, the guy who did the comic, wrote in Java. And that was his kind of, you know, little poke at people, is, you know, Java is basically in everything. I'm not talking about JavaScript. I'll get to that later. But Java is actually still a huge thing. You know, how many of you tried out Java and were like, this is too hard. I need to switch to something easier. Have you tried Java? Yeah, that shit is hard. And you know why it's hard? Because it does very, very powerful things very quickly. Um, but, you know, how many of you have coded for a space shuttle? I won't even raise my hand as an example. None of us have coded for space shuttles. Most of the space shuttles, a lot of the uh, European Space Agency equipment runs on Java because they know they can count on it. What about, whoops, that was the wrong button. What about Python? Python is for like, you know, academics and colleges and stuff, right? Like people, people don't, you can't use that to build a web application or like, you know, an Android app or whatever. It's Python, it's for colleges, it's for math and science, it's for learning. Um, totally not true, totally a misconception. Um, at Engine Yard, on the community team, we actually wrote a cool script that, um, is a way to give back to the community people that we thought were doing cool things. They were on Git Tip, now Gratipay, whatever they want to call it today, it doesn't really matter. We wanted to give money to these projects and these people. And so one of my, uh, one of my teammates, uh, this guy named Noah Slater, he said, you know what, I'm going to write it in Python. And we're going to run it on Engine Yard. And it's like, we don't run Python. It's like, no, no, we'll make it run. And he did. And it's a great thing that we pushed through. And real simple, not a lot of complicated maths, not a lot of complicated business. But it just simply takes the money and pushes it to these people who deserve it. Nick, please stop doing that. I'm trying to talk up here, man. It's, it's not time for that yet. What about Linux? People love Linux, but Linux is never going to be a large portion of the desktop GUI interface that people buy at whatever Best Buy or where they buy their computers that aren't Macs these days. Um, yet, if you've ever been on, a, been on an airplane, that shows movies and then suddenly it all goes wrong somewhere in the middle because some guy tried to watch Whiplash and it didn't work out for him so he started hitting buttons and shut down the whole system. That wasn't me. Um, but you'll notice that when they, the, sorry, we have to reboot the movie system and once the entertainment system is back up, everyone will have functionality. Whenever they say that, the first thing you see on your screen, talks to the penguin. Because Linux is powerful. It's simple. It's straightforward. And it's not going to die. Pearl. Pearl's been dead for years. This was actually, oddly, a response that I got on a blog post about, that I wrote about Ruby not being dead. And the, the response of this Pearl blog was to say, is Pearl dead or just deader than Ruby? And I never, like there's nothing else there. This is the whole article, like that's pretty much it. This is what this guy responded and I was like, I don't even fucking know how to take that, but whatever. Um, so yeah, Pearl's not dead. I actually, I was just in Belgium a little while ago, and uh, Larry was up on stage talking about Pearl 6, 7, whatever. Do they have numbers there anymore? I don't know. Um, but Pearl's still alive. Pearl's still active. It's still powerful. We can't keep saying everything's dead because we have something new. Swift. Swift is amazing. We're done. Thanks. Have a good night. Have any of you ever coded in Swift? You know what Swift isn't? Fast. Um, and I added this to the presentation because I saw this awesome, awesome tweet. Like, are you fucking serious? Like, apparently, Objective-C coders are the equivalent of pregnant women and the elderly. I, I'm not only offended as someone who's done Objective-C before, I'm also offended for my wife who is at one point a pregnant woman and any elderly person that I found because apparently that means you're also obsolete. Like who, 
Did you kiss your mother with that tweet? I mean, seriously. On the other hand, and I know this might upset a few people, just because you stick a JS on something, that doesn't make it the new hot shit. Um, there are a lot of great things that actually work. Node is great. React is great. Angular is available. Um, <laughs> And Ember, Ember is great, but like, I was working on something with a friend of mine, and we were just like, let's see how many .js we could find. Bacon JS, do you know what it does? Fucking nothing. Phone JS, do you know what it does? Basically shit you can do with Twilio, but poorly. Um, like, beard neck JS, like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> there was this period of like six months where like every day you could find a new .js. Like, I, I desperately tried to code something called pj.js, but you can't even get a domain for that, so I... Like, it's not about being with it. It's not about the new hotness. It's about having something, having tools that you can work with and build things with and opening up your mind to say, okay, other tools might be good for this too. But you can't just say, damn, this is new. I'm, I'm a Go developer now. I'm, I'm a Go developer. I've just decided because Go, there's lots of tweets about it, so it must be good. That's not how things work. And I'm not knocking Go, but I feel like the Ruby community definitely went through that over the past year and a half. I actually went to a conference where 50% of the talks were about go for Rubyists. That's not a Ruby conference. So what's at the basis of all these? Communities, yay. As some of you happily laughed last night as I was foolishly passing out my business card because I think that's hilariously funny that someone would give me a business card. Um, I'm a community engineer at Engineered. That's what I do, I work with communities. It's like my favorite thing, I like people. That's why I get up on stage so you can all look at me. Nick, put your sunglasses on. I feel the gaze. Um, so let's talk about communities for a bit. Like, communities are like the best part of being a developer. Like, a lot of developers are kind of introverted, and they're like, I don't really want to talk to other people and whatever, but I guess I'll go to this meetup, or I'll go to this conference, and I won't talk to anybody, but I'll learn some shit, whatever. It's like, no, you know, we love to be part of the community. We love being part of the Ruby community, right? That's why we're here. And we love being part of a community, but like, you know, separately from the other communities and equally f from the other communities and never mingling with those other communities, and that's the fucking problem right there. We all live in glass houses, and we all love to throw stones. So the first part is getting people to leave their little niche. Stop being a Rubyist. Now, I don't mean stop coding in Ruby, because coding is not who you are. It's not everything that you do. There are other parts to your life. I'm just saying, stop only coding Ruby. Look at other things. Get some, get some cross-pollination. Go to another meetup. Be, be the Java guy at the, the, the Groovy meetup. Be the Ruby person at the PHP meetup. Be the Go girl at the .js meetup. Do it. See what they're doing. Go to open hacks. Open hacks are great. There's no languages. Like Anyone uses whatever language they want. You shoulder surf. So the reason why I bring this up is these are things that I've actually heard people say at conferences and meetups. Designers aren't developers. They shouldn't be at hardcore tech meetups. I can't design anything worth shit. Anything I make, I was talking about this with someone, anything I make works great. Looks shit. Um, CSS is hardcore developing. I don't care what you say. Um, Sysadmins can live without developers. What do we really need them for? Because what are you going to put on a system if there's no code to put there? You can stack every server rack you want. You can build every cloud platform you want. If there's no applications to go on it, you've now done absolutely nothing. Um, business folks don't, just don't get developers. That's one of my favorites, because a lot of times it's a difficult thing. We have to de-jargonize, and they have to de-jargonize. We have to stop using our special phrases and talk like people. Tech people are socially inept, all of them. Really? I think there's been like 16 people up on this stage that changed that idea. So why don't we just make it like the tech community? Yay, we're the tech community. We all code or build robots or play with Raspberry Pis or build iPhone applications or Android applications, whatever. We all do it. We help design, we help build, we help make things better. Even if you are building a stupid coffee app for all of the organic blends in Soma, you're doing something. You're part of a tech community. It doesn't matter what language you're using. So then there's the last bit here. Open source versus the enterprise. Apples and oranges, right? 
um, the dichotomy between open source software and, and the enterprise, or non-open source software. Like, how many of us here are open source developers? Probably almost all of us. Okay, maybe not as many as I thought. Um, how many of us that are open source developers haven't always been? Like, I know that I, for example, I'm a Ruby developer. Um, before I came to Ruby, I, I coded in Visual Fox Pro. <laughs> that doesn't leave this room. You, can, you need to edit that from the video, Visual Fox Pro. We don't talk about it. Um, so let's go back to this. Like, this is the argument. This is the idea. This is the perception. We as open source developers make nothing useful. People who are in the enterprise only want to make money by building things for big business like airplanes. Um, that's crazy. The enterprise dev just wants to make money. The open source dev just wants to build shitty apps for free and only never pay for software, even though we pay 1500 bucks for MacBooks, but we won't pay for software? What? Wait, no. Um, like, we need to do away with these stereotypes. Like, I actually knew quite a few people when I was part of the Microsoft community that were perfectly cool with open source, and they didn't care about the money. They really liked the code that they built. They really liked solving problems. And you start to realize, like, that's, that's what we do. It doesn't matter what language you're doing it or whether you're wearing a tie or shorts. Um, much to my grandmother's dismay, we never picked up ties in the open source community, but, you know, whatever. Um, but, yeah, we can't just consider these people cogs because they work in, you know, a big, huge office that has, you know, 30 floors and everyone wears khaki pants and dress shirts. So what? They're solving problems. They're probably solving problems harder than the average one we're doing on our own. Why can't we all just get along? Maybe the poor, downtrodden, open source dev is just as bad as the earning so much cube dweller. Maybe there's a lot about organization and general usefulness that the open source community can learn from the enterprise. Um, I imagine there's a lot of crack craft and creativity that goes on on both sides that we can both learn from. So that's really what we need to do. We need to focus on getting along. We need to focus on sharing the things. We need to all get together for the children. For the children. So part of the point of this talk is to point out that there are flaws in human logic. We as people like to kind of inflate our own interests until we get to the point where everything's so blown out of proportion that we can't even talk anymore. Um, we try to be our best for like 50 or 60 years, and then we move on. And I'm ignoring the teenage years because nobody did anything good then anyway, except for like try to chase things and drink as much as possible. So we need to smash the pedestal. We need to get rid of all these ideas. You are not, because you're an open source developer, a super ninja wizard rock star. Um, if you were a wizard, that'd be amazing, but I'd like to see some magic, and I don't think any of you can produce it on that level. If you're a rock star, Avdi might be an exception, because, yeah. And Nick, shit, wrong crowd. Um, if you're a rock star, that means apparently you've played a musical instrument or sang in front of at least like a couple thousand people because they paid to see you and they were excited. If you're a ninja, I don't know, maybe that's the people in the empty seats because ninjas you can't see, they're amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can all be amazing. We can always be amazing and we can always build. By accepting more and more people into our tech community, and not excluding them because of the languages that they're using or the preferences that they have for the tools that they use. I mean, we can be successful. We can make friends and we can all be happy. This is also one of the only other pictures I have with no hat on, that's actually me. It's completely unrecognizable. So um, forget the legends, forget the myths about who you are being about what you do and the tools that you use. Do the best you can to be cool with everyone around you. Help new people get into tech. And without all the surrounding bullshit, eventually these urban reg legends will disappear like a chupacabra in the night. Thanks.